Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you happen to be watching another interview from the non-league in Suffolk. We're not talking SIL today, we are going up the divisions. I am delighted to be able to say that this evening I am joined by none other than Ian Watson, newly member of the Witten United management team. Ian, how are you doing, mate? You're well? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Really good. Good, good. Um, let's let's get straight into it. Let's talk about it. Witten United. How did that come about? What was, talk talk to us about the story there? Yeah, kind of, um, kind of a strange one, really. I mean, certain things in football have happened like this to me before, to be honest with you. It was just a case of last week they they started to announce their their signings for the new season, and um, and obviously one that popped up was um, was Jack Sperling, and obviously um, Kevin and I signed Jack to Phoenix Day when we got promoted. To, to step four um, and we'd seen enough of him to say you know he's one of the best keepers around and he had a blinding game against us previous to that on Boxing Day in the league and we just couldn't beat him and we we took him on board he's a young keeper um, great shot stopper and, and then I saw that he was gone to, he'd gone to Witten because he, he and I had had conversations about if I knew of any clubs that might be interested in the keeper which I was surprised there, was, there wasn't more knocking on his door really yeah. and I just texted him to congratulate him um, you know good club you know, I like Shane at, at Whitton, um, known him a long time and said he's a, he's a good man. And, and, yeah. I, and I said, you know, get, you know, get your feet back on the ground, you'll enjoy it, I think. Just get your mojo and confidence back. And, and it kind of went from there. I sort of, then we got into a conversation. I said I wanted to text Shane to say, you know, I, I, I just let him know, you know, I was pleased with him, what good signing, which is what I did. Text yeah. Shane saying, you know, he's a great keeper, you know, great signing for you guys. Um, he would definitely add. Um, one of my favourites and one of the best around, and, and so yeah. you know, I also said to Shane, I'm going out watching a lot of games. You know, I'm, I'm always available if you need some some people watch players watch or you need um, any games watched. And and he sort of kind of came back and says, Well, do you fancy coming on board? <laughs> and, right. and that's yeah. At the time, um, his mate Notty was was doing it with him, and and uh, Notty stepped down for personal reasons for the time being. Yeah. So then it was a question of oh, I'll have to go home and talk to the missus, really. <laughs> Because you've had obviously a bit of time away since since you left Phoenix, though. Um, how have you been itching to get back into football? Or was this sounded kind of like a not? I wouldn't say a spur at the moment sort of thing, but have you been enjoying your time off, or have you been kind of itching to get back? <laughs> is this a weird one, isn't it? Because I'd, I'd probably say if you take me back before the lockdown, I wasn't itching to be honest with you. I was enjoying the break. Um, I was I was desperate to go out and watch games. I still wanted to keep my you know my finger on the pulse with with all the difference to the levels you know four yeah. and, and five. And we watched myself and my missus went and watched quite a few games last season. Went and watched Stone Market quite a few times and Brantham and a couple of other sides, Coggeshall. And then um, just you know it was weird. I, I, I had the conversation with the wife since, and it's like it was I, I, I couldn't. I was finding it difficult to just be a spectator and watch. Right. You know, you, you, I've always been. I've watched games, and since I've been doing the management side of it for over ten years, it's like you just you just want to try and influence. You, you, you're thinking in your head how you could change this game yourself, and that. So it was finding it difficult. Um, Gillette Soccer Saturday helped, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> myself and the missus found ourselves uh, having a couple of drinks on Saturday afternoon watching that, and that got me through it a little bit. But obviously, I had my phone on constantly with all the non-league results, constantly going through Twitter and all the non-league sides and. Yeah. So now everyone was getting on, you know, throughout the afternoon. Surprised me how quickly a Saturday afternoon goes for that, you know, from three till five. Never seemed to be that way when I was when I was actually uh, a manager on the sidelines. It seems to yeah. drag and drag and drag. But yeah, yeah, I kind of, you know, it wasn't, you know, I, I think the, the taste was always there. I felt that I hadn't, I hadn't finished. I, you know, I, you know, I still had a bit of a chapter left open on the management side and. And it came about, and, and realistically, just I literally went and watched the the, the friendly against Ipswich Wanderers on Saturday, completely open-minded. I'd had a good chat with the wife, and she said, we'll just go and have a look. And we'd said, we'll give it a couple of weeks and, and see how you feel, go and watch some friendlies and have a look, get to meet the boys. And, and to be yeah. honest, I went, on, I went on Saturday, and it was just, I just got it. I just stood by, by the dugout, and it all came back again. I was, I was missing it too much. And yeah. Big smile yeah. on my face, and the wife said I came back, um, kind of, like I hadn't been for a long time. And I, she, I think she knew then. don't think she was over keen on me getting back involved. But <laughs> I think once she saw the look on my face, we had a few drinks Saturday night and the decision was made. But yeah. I think um, it's, it's weird. I read something that Danny Cowley wrote and 
And you look back at what happened at Felix Day, um, don't get me wrong, you know, the, the situation, the scenario, sort of having done so much at the club and, and, and taking the club to another level and, and worked yeah. really hard on the fan base and things to, to kind of how it ended was, was left me a little bit bitter actually at times. Um, yeah. Some people, some people I thought that were, were friends of mine and, or, you know, I got to know them really well when I was down there and worked really hard for them. And you kind of, you ended up with no recognition for anything you did and sort of that, the door was closed and that was it. So you yeah. kind of, Danny Kelly said that you go into like a, a kind of football depression, he called it. And he, and yeah. he mentioned it the Huddersfield. And, you know, I understand, I understand depression. I understand, you know, I've had friends and, and people I know. I've, 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 I've certainly been touched by it myself in the past. And, and, and it certainly felt that way. It's almost like a relationship breakup, to be honest with you, yeah. to start off with. Yeah. And even the, even the yeah. wife said that. It's like splitting up with a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Do you but think yeah, the buzz then, came back. Do you think then that the situation that, we, that we've had over the past few months and the way that football as well has come to a complete stop, do you think that helped you or do you think that hindered you? Because you sound like in terms of how you wanted to get back into it once you realised how much you're missing it. It's, it's kind of like that Neil Warnock effect. He, he always says, this is my last job, this is my last yeah. job, and then he gets, in, he, he gets the itch and he goes back in. You, you sort of mentioned about something similar there. So, so did, the, did the lockdown help in terms of, well, it's the same for everyone, I can't get back into football, there's nothing for me to do, or did it just make you miss it even more? I think... I think... I didn't. I didn't miss it. I'll be hand on heart. Um, I didn't miss it at all. Um, you know, the season finished. I felt for. I felt for so many clubs the way the season finished. You know, especially yeah. the likes of Stone Market. Um, yeah. And, the, and the, de the decisions that were made with the leagues, and, and obviously Molden from step four that we were in. And, and you think, ah, oh, it's kind of it's one of those. But I'm, I'm, I was glad in some ways I wasn't involved in it. If I'm honest yeah. with you, because. That I'd have probably had a bigger effect if I'd still been involved in a game, and that had happened to me as a manager. And then yeah. the after effects, you know, the after effects of how it, how it has been with other clubs, with lots of clubs financially. I know certain clubs are okay, so I think it didn't. And then football start, I started to watch the German games, so they're the first ones on. Yeah. Struggled with that. Struggled with that a little bit, if I'm honest with you. Um, <laughs> and then the Premiership started again, and football was back. And yeah, I still didn't. I still couldn't see myself getting back involved in it. To be honest with you. I mean, I had some. I had some offers. You know, since October last year, I've had some really good offers, and you know, I just, I just wasn't ready at the time. I think I was still struggling a little bit with with what had happened at Felix, though. But um, yeah, yeah, I think I don't, you know, I didn't miss it at all. Lockdown. It's just when you come out of it and football's back, it's kind of you start to see everyone tweeting and and texting and messaging and WhatsApp groups going lively and everything. You think, oh, it's back, but it's been yeah. a bit of a shock, really, because. You know, I've, I've worked hard in lockdown to not to, to, to work to the guidelines. Myself and my wife, we've been working from home. And, but then to then go back to the, the football side of it, it feels, it feels surreal a little bit, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, the fans yeah. not being there is, the, you know, the, the major thing. But and let's hope, why, you know, I can't see why fans can't come back the way when you look at other events and things that are going on. But I do understand yeah. it. Yeah. But it still feels strange, you know. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've, I've tweeted my my thoughts on that many a time in terms of, you know, you're, out, you're allowing people back into shops in a crowded condition and it's all, you know, you're all in a room together. Why can't you be allowed out in the open? But, you know, yeah. as you said... Well, you can that, go to a pub, can't you? You can go to a pub and, yeah. and, and you know... Exactly. <laughs> I know they look after what you do. I mean, I haven't really... And this is really unusual for me, I have to say. I haven't really been in the pub for five months. <laughs> 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 people will be shocked by that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you're, I mean, just going by the Witten um, statement that they put out when they when they announced that you had that you had joined, it's talking about the fact that you're going to be working alongside Shane and James in in terms of the first team management. So, it's not been a huge amount of time, as you said, to from when you decided to come back, the you know talked about it, and now it's all been announced and out in the open. So. What kind of discussions have you had about the role that you're going to be playing? Because ultimately, Shane is the number one. James, we know, is the co you know from a coaching perspective. So, where where do you fit into it? Where what what are you hoping to gain from this? It's it's quite a weird scenario, isn't it? Because yeah. we've had this conversation. I mean, this is all this is all brand new to us at the moment, obviously, because it's, it's it's in its infancy. Because obviously, it was announced on Sunday, and yeah. this is where the conversation started. 
you know, Shane and I had some very good conversations, you know. At the end of the day, he's, he's the manager. He's, he's the man that's, that's taking Witten to where they are now. Um, yep. I, I said at the time, I didn't want to go in and tread on anyone's toes. And that was, you know, I was only going to have conversations with them. Um, mm. And James is a fantastic coach. A yes. really good coach. And I, and I know a lot, you know, I, I, I don't just, I just jump into things. I do my research and I ask a lot of questions about people I'm going to be working with and so forth. And uh, no, I was impressed by what I heard from, from my fellow peers that I'd asked about them. Well, mm-hmm. I knew about Shane anyway, to be fair. We'd, we'd been going toe to toe since the SIL days. So, um, everyone, yeah. everyone knows about Shane. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, bless him. You know, and yeah, you, you know, you know, when Shane's in a room, don't you? That's the thing. Yes. And uh, so, <laughs> It, it was never. It, it's weird because it still isn't a role. I mean, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, I said to Shane, I find it difficult. I find it difficult being a number two after what I've done. Um, but then, in yeah. the other breath, I don't want to. I don't want to be a joint manager with you because this is your. It's his baby. So, from my point of view, I'm kind of going in there to sort of bring my experience. You know, I'll I'll, I'll have. You know, we'll bounce things off. You can't. You can't do this job at any level of football. I don't think unless you you've got someone great that you can work with. And you can bounce bounce things off. I've been really privileged that everything I've done in in management in football, I've always had someone there throughout yeah. if throughout the SIL all the way up to you know step four football with finishing with Danny last season. I've always, and Kev and I obviously work like a dream as well. But always bounce things off each other. And and you, if you get a happy medium, you know at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not in any hurry to get to 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 do anything really. I'd like to I'd like to sort of think that I can go in and and change things a little bit off the pitch. At Witten, that'll be a, right. a big plan for me, and and maybe sort of ruffle some feathers and and see what we can do. I mean, it's a it's a community that you know I'm only down the road from it, and you know if I go and watch games, it tended to be there as well because it was only down the road. I know a lot of people there. I've known a lot of people at Witten for donkeys years, and um, you know played against them so many times, and it's been it's been an up and down roller coaster for the club at times, and yeah. there's never there's never been a great deal of money there, and you know I think. It's something we can we can work on attracting people to come and watch and and if I can if I can just build those things around the actual football club itself, not dissimilar to what I did at Felix though, to to a, to an extent hopefully, um, you know make the club a better place and and still the football side of things, you know Shane's there we can he can bounce off me and, and James can bounce off me and you know it's just good that James was quite happy you know going by what Shane said he was happy for me to come in and and be part of it so. Nothing yeah. heavy, and to me, it's quite nice because I've I've been 150 percent for so long for for four or five years at Felix though, and then yeah. the management side. It's nice not having to to be like you know I've got to look after everything all the time. You know, it almost sounds as if it's like a consultant sort of like advisory role yeah. more than more <laughs> than more Trouble than shoot. like it's like a troubleshooter, isn't it? Troubleshooter. <laughs> <laughs> That's that, what we call it. Would, would, a career. Would you, would you kind of agree with that? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, but if, at the end of the day, you know, bottom line is, and, and I said to show, I'm sitting at home. I'm not sitting at home, but I'm not involved in football. Yeah. And there's, I've got experience. There's no doubt of that. I've, I've worked with some really good people. I've, I've picked up, you know, Peter Trevivian from James's point of view. Peter Trevivian, I learned so much from as a coach. Yeah. And what he brought as a coach to the coach that Felix Dane is a ma- major thing that, that should have probably remain at Felix Dane so in my eyes because for, the, for the, the youth culture and the coaches at the club to move on. and So these are things I can bring. And it's pointless me having them in my head and sitting on them when, when you know, there's a good club out there like Witten who can, who can maybe take some stuff from me, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Let's look at the, the club overall based on how they kind of finished things last season. I think it was a very tough start to the season and that, uh, that was hampered a lot by injuries in terms of they brought a lot of big names into the club those players got injured. They never really kind of got going. It was a very stop-start beginning. But they, they managed to pull themselves into a mid-table position. Now, ideally, that is not where they would, would want to be as a club. I think they, they should and will be aiming higher than that. Next year, have you have you got any thoughts about where you ultimately think they should be? In, or have you, you know, do you, have you talked about any expectations at the moment? Have those conversations been had at this point? Yeah, I'm, the, the, you know the, the problem you've got, when, especially when it's a, a club like Witten, um, expectations are very difficult. And and where I say some clubs have been hit, you know, that are up here that, that have been hit by the COVID pandemic, have maybe survived a fair bit and dropped a little bit. Whereas clubs like Witten, it's, it's, it's come as a major blow to them financially and stuff like that. And right. I think that's the, that's the thing. It's 
it's very difficult to set expectations. What I would say is, from from expectation from what I've seen, literally in in a week week and a bit from from training and and watching a game on Saturday with a, a mixture of trialists and young players that are at the club, it's actually quite exciting. There's some some I knew there were some good players there. Obviously, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I said to Shane, I've looked I've looked at a lot of his players before. Um, and you know, I've considered making approaches. And if I'm honest with you, now I've seen them. I wish I had because there's some, there's some cracking players in there. Brilliant. You know, there's some boys. I'm now, you know, I've got to be careful what I say because clubs will be looking at them. But they're they're good, honest, good, honest bunch of lads. And and I've kind of missed that a little bit where you get to work with a group that you know they do listen to you and and stuff like that. And I can see that. that I saw that in Shane the way he spoke to him on Saturday. They listen and, yeah. and, and they want to play football. They want to enjoy football. And that's the reason they do it. You know. Yeah. You know, it's not a funny, it's not a club that's financially, you know, privileged like a lot of clubs are. And um, yeah, I think you know that, that's actually quite a nice challenge and a nice, a nice way to be, especially as we come out of this pandemic to a certain degree in football. Yeah, so definitely. Expectations I always have, and be fair, but I can't set them at the moment because it's difficult. Come back to me in I don't know a couple of months into the season, maybe, or, <laughs> or Shane. I'll have a chat with Shane and see what he says. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in all honesty, you're probably right in terms of how a lot of clubs, especially in the furlough, none will be looking at this because really a lot of clubs have kept quite quiet in terms of their incomes and outgoings. I mean, some are very outspoken about, how, you know, their player signings and want to create a bit of a hype around their club, but a lot, not really saying and doing an awful, you know, doing an awful lot. So do you think, do you think that will be the case? And, you know, a few months into the season, we'll, we'll, that's when we'll truly have a reflection of where we are. Yeah, I think so, definitely. Um, you know, it's interesting to see that... I, it's kind of a lot have gone under the radar. There's not a lot of clubs that are going out there like massively saying, look who we've signed. But yeah. you look at it and a lot of the clubs, are, you know, they've either re-signed very good squads they had last season. Which That's the bit that pleases me the most, I think, to see players that, that stuck with that with the clubs despite that they might have had a cut in money, if I'm honest with you. They they might have, you know, had offers from other, other clubs, but they've stuck yeah. with the club. And I'm really pleased to see that. And, and some bits and clubs in, in Suffolk that that's happened with. And, and I like that. Um, I think... I don't, you know, I, I think it would still be a very good, a very good level of player at clubs anyway, personally. Um, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, boys have got to play football no matter what. And, but I've been really, where I've been probably really critical of players in the past, which I am, I can't, I can't deny it. You know, if a player yeah. wants to move up the road for five pound a game and stuff like that, it infuriates me a little bit um, when he has the opportunity to learn from, 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 from good coaches and managers and maybe improve himself even more and then, then move on to a bigger level. Um, yeah. I, I think I've been quite impressed by players coming out of this and, and then to see the players what they've done in the in, in, in the pandemic itself during the pandemic with donation to the NHS a lot of clubs I mean I, I can't think of a club that hasn't donated their end of season you know club funds which come people don't realise how big they are sometimes yeah. you know, some of these club funds that the, the players pots are sometimes a few thousand and that yeah. and to, them to donate their money and obviously they've lost money themselves um, as it came about from you know the time of the season it finished so yeah. I'm impressed by that but I think yeah, I think you'll have to give it a couple of months to see how things settle down. But it's definitely going to be a struggle. Um, I just hope people, you know, the, the, the general public, when they're allowed back in to watch games, they do support non-league a lot more than they have. And I hope they will. Do you think people are continuing to sign on with clubs because they're realising that the money side of things is not the be-all and end-all now? Because I think the pandemic has made people switch their mindset quite a lot now in terms of, if I'm local, if I'm enjoying my football and I'm playing for a team that I actually appre- you know, that appreciate me, I appreciate them. But as you said, for that extra five quid, ten quid to go and move somewhere else and possibly play in a higher league where more travelling, further time away from the family, etc. That I think that's going to have a massive effect now. I don't, 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 don't disagree, mate. I think, and, and it's nice, I like that, but I do think that players have had that mentality to a certain degree. Um, yep. they've, they've stopped in in what March, and um, you know there's the other side of things. As a player, you know I played a decent standard for myself, and every every football team I've been involved in, you had that camaraderie, and and, and you as a group, as a team, you you know you you you're mates for that season. Whatever team you play for, you become mates for. It's all right, you have your fallouts more so nowadays than we used to in the past. <laughs> um, but you know you you have that, and if you've got a good, you know you haven't got like a group of three, group of four, group of five there, where you've got your clicks. If you've got that, it doesn't work. If you've got a group of players that become friends over a season, they'll have missed each other as well. You know, for that period of time, not seeing each other, I know they grizzle, they go to training, they have 
they argue with each other. But if you take them away from each other, they do they do miss each other, the same as the management do, you know, with yep. players. So I think that has an effect, and I do think you're right. I, I do hope, anyway, I do honestly hope that that is the case. Yeah, definitely. Well, Reset, reset, we say, yeah? Yeah, exactly, exactly it. Well, Ian, I really wish you all the best of luck for the upcoming season. Uh, I, I'll... I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on this and seeing how things develop because it's it's an interesting dynamic between the three of you. And <laughs> I know James, I know James really well. Um, he's a good he's a good friend of mine in terms of non league football. Someone that I know and trust um, very well. And as I think the three of you, it is it, going to make for a very entertaining and very very capable team there's a lot of there's a lot of unique aspects to all three of your games which i think if you bring it all together it's going to work very very nicely so i can't wait to see how it all works out yeah i, I, I totally agree I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. i mean we've only had brief conversations but i have to say that like the conversation with shane and then, then shane myself like on saturday i sat talking to, to james for ages uh this is before i made my mind up then i sat then sat talking to shane the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up just the conversations we're having I think, wow. I think you know, it's exciting because, you know, you can sometimes get in a routine and in a rut of how you do things. And sometimes someone new coming in, whether it be a player or someone into the club, can actually, the management side of things, can, can maybe change the dynamic for you a little bit. And, yeah. and, you, and you get, the thing is, it's what you get out of it. We don't do this. We don't do this. You know, if anything, this job costs us money a lot of the time when you do the management side of things. Yeah. And, um, and you, you, you do it for the love of football. And you do it for the football club you're working for. So you've got to enjoy it yourself. And I'd like to think the one thing that Shane, James and I will do this season is enjoy it. There'll be times we won't. I know that. I'm used to that. But I think that's the important thing. You've got to enjoy it and, and work well together and enjoy it. If, if, if one of the three of us is down in the dumps and has had enough, that, that's not, things aren't working properly. So Yeah, yeah. It's when I get an angry emoji come through from James, I'll be like, oh God, what's Ian done now? <laughs> Uh, you never know, do you? It might be what Shane done. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It probably will be. It'll probably be what he, what he said this, what he said that. But I am who I am, and, and you know. But I think I think it, it's quite exciting, really. Yeah, I'm yeah. Looking, looking forward to us all working together. So. Yeah, I, I, I said I can't wait to come down and see you guys in action. I'm going to give it a couple of months. I want to see how things progress, and then round about November, December time, I'll definitely come down and we'll uh, we'll have a chat face to face. Perfect, mate. We'll, we'll, all three of us will look forward to this, ain't you? You'll have yeah, the three definitely. amigos to talk to. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> if you guys have enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you want to take that support one step further, uh, Kofi links and Patreon donations are available in the description that would mean the world. But until next time, as always, adios. Mm -hmm.